Welcome everybody to another episode in this interview series for mastermind leaders. My name is Sebastian Cruz, seven-year mastermind leader myself, founder of the True Freedom Mastermind for Mastermind Leaders. And today is a very special guest and case study. We have Michael Bledsoe here, who is a 16-year perform performance coach, excuse me, and has now connected to his calling to help support American veterans with a unique mastermind community that, quite frankly, I feel like solves so many of the obvious problems that um, I feel like our country, our politicians are just not addressing for the men and the women who put their lives on the line for our nation. And yes, our nation has a share of problems and such. And at the same time, for me, at least, when people are putting their lives on the line, for us, I believe we should take care of them. So before we get into the structure of today, um, how are you doing, Bledsoe? Welcome aboard. Fantastic. Yeah. Just uh, loving the day. Had a lot of energy so far. So looking forward to riding this wave with you. Nice. Me too. So yeah, I'd love to hear a bit of how did you get connected to your mission of serving American veterans. And just so everybody knows, Michael started posting on Facebook, a few posts here and there. And just every one, I just felt like, boom, like a punch in the chest in a good way of like, wow, I felt so happy, inspired, um, excited that what he was doing for the veterans. So just I'd say paint the stage with that first and foremost of how we got here. And uh, yeah, with that being said, love to hear how did your story begin with getting connected to this mission of serving American veterans? Yeah, so I, I got out of the Navy in uh, 2005. So I've been out for 18 years. And when I got out, I thought that I it was not going to be a hard thing to do. You know, I look forward to the day I got out. I thought it was going to be the best day of my life. And I can remember the day I woke up and I was quote unquote free and it was not what I expected. It did not feel good. It felt really terrifying. I felt lost. I had, I didn't know what I was going to do next. And I also, um, for, for many years afterwards, tried to really separate myself from that experience. I didn't join any veteran groups. I didn't uh, like to identify or talk about my service at all. I really just wanted to, to put it behind me. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I remember, I remember, uh, I went back to my hometown when I got out and I went to my mom's work and there's a guy that had been in the army that she was working with. And he goes, well, uh, how long you been out? Uh, and I said, you know, I've been out for a week or two. He goes, Wow okay, how is it? And I go, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, everything's great. Mm -hmm. And he goes, all right, I'll, let me know in a year how you feel about that. And, you know, uh, he was right there. Like, like he was alluding to something. It, there was a lot of challenge. And so um, it took me a long time to want to really go full-time serving veterans. I went into entrepreneurship uh, in 2007. And uh, I really was running away from whatever internal disturbances I was experiencing. I was not experiencing peace inside of myself at all. And I, be, you know, became a high performing athlete, you know, I had six pack abs and jumping on podiums and winning things, and still wasn't happy. And then I pursued business and I made a lot of money and became uh, quote unquote YouTube famous to a degree like, uh, you know, had a YouTube channel that had a couple hundred thousand subscribers before, you know, now it's 2024. Having that many subscribers is not that big of a deal. But back then it was rare to break a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. And, and I still was miserable and it, um, and I just kept running and running and, uh, around uh 2015 16 i started uh i had i discovered psychedelics in, in 2013 and it, they were really 
pivotal for my own growth and being able to accept myself and experience some peace. And then in 2015, I started inviting other veterans into that space and joining with high skilled facilitators to do that. So from 2015 to 20 through 2023, I would work with veterans on and off. I about every six months, I would co-facilitate some type of retreat experience. And I always felt the best when I did that. I always returned lit up and high energy and loving it. But I had this belief that it had to be charitable and that there was no way that I would ever being a being a business owner who had, you know, been really successful in businesses, how can I I can't charge these people. Uh, there's no way to make money at it. I wasn't interested in collaborating with any government agencies or anything like that. I because I was like trying to get away from it as much as possible. And um, I remember I was uh, doing some research last August and uh, I, I still lead and uh, was leading uh, something called sacred hunting uh, trips. Uh, uh, a friend of ours, Monzel Denton, he founded uh, the organization and uh, he wanted to start a veterans division. So we started taking veterans on these sacred hunting trips which involves the Lakota sweat lodge and it involves a mushroom experience in the middle. And, and, um, and so I started leading these veterans on these hunts and I really loved it. And I started putting together, we needed money to do it. So I started doing some research for some fundraising. And as I'm doing the research, I was wanting to point out that veterans make less money than uh, the, their counterparts, their civilian counterparts. And the truth was, was they tend to make more money, uh, if they're working. Right. So it's, it's not evenly distributed in that way. And it, that actually made the belief that, that they can't afford help crumble. Mm -hmm. And that actually opened a door in my mind where I started seeing a possibility of a business and, then that also opened the door to, which then allowed me to realize, oh, there are other funding sources. It's, it's not all about me having to charge them money, but it just, there was a door that was closed that I had this belief that was blocking my ability to see possibilities. And so last September, I woke up in the middle of the night after doing that research. And I was like, oh my gosh, I am supposed to serve veterans. I've been, I'm uniquely positioned to do this. I've been out for 18 years. I've been through all these uh, different trials and tribulations. I've had to figure it out for myself. There was really uh, everyone I'd come in contact with uh, ha had not really figured it out to the degree I had. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to practice faith and I'm going to go all in on veterans. I have no idea how I'm going to survive and pay bills and, you know, make the millions of dollars that I, in my mind, felt like I really wanted to have, you know, and I'm also engaged and I have a fiance that has like, you know, this, we have this expectation of life that we're going to have a certain level of financial success. And I was like, you know what, I'm just not even going to worry about financial success and I'm going to follow this passion and trust that it's going to work out. So I started doing research and I started putting stuff together and I noticed, you know, I go, I looked at it and I go, man, we have a, we have a really big problem here. And so first off, I jumped into it, not knowing how I was going to make money at it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how I was going to pay the bills. And then once I gave that up, I started seeing more possibility. And then, um, I, I really like what, um, something that Alex or Moses mentioned before, which is like build something that's not scalable and then figure out how to scale it later. Love it. Yeah. And uh, that stuck out to me. And uh, he, he's a business genius, of course. Um, and I identified some problems that really just occurred to me. It wasn't one of those things. I was doing research, but the it wasn't like I was trying to find a problem. I was just seeing what existed out there for veterans that I might not be aware of. Mm -hmm. And I go, oh, well, the VA uh, historically has done a, a poor job of helping with mental health. The VA is really good at a few things. Mm -hmm. You know, they're really great at prosthetics. They're good at getting you college money and 
a loan for your house. Uh, when it comes to mental health and chronic disease, not so good. I mean, it's it's indicative of the medical system because that's just the medical system, right? And that's all veterans get is traditional, or I, I say establishment, not traditional medicine. And the um, so, but then on the other side, you have like these organizations that are saying, "Hey, if you have PTSD, we'll we'll fly you down to Costa Rica and serve you ayahuasca." And so that's a big gap. First off, most. <laughs> right. Most veterans like to go from I'm on psychiatric a cabinet full of psychiatric drugs that the VA gave me to I'm going to go down to Costa Rica or Peru and do ayahuasca, which is a very effective tool. Um, is first off is a big gap. Secondly, it's not scalable. There's mm-hmm. 200 to 250 thousand new veterans every year. Wow! It's not possible to give everybody an experience like that. Um, And so, I mean, even if there was enough like physical psychedelic medicine available, the amount of people that are able to prep and integrate and all that kind of stuff, um, it's just not there. And so what I found was the models of the organizations that are doing really good stuff, their models aren't scalable. They can only help maybe a hundred veterans a year, a hundred out of 200,000. And then the the stuff that is quote unquote scalable isn't really that helpful. So I go, oh, we have an opportunity to create a scalable model that that works. And I'm not going to count on every veteran finding psychedelic medicine. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't even expect them to. It's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. And so with, you know, uh, I've been creating coaching companies for 16 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've. I had built seven of them and there's a lot of personal development work put in there, a lot of entrepreneurial um, uh, lessons in there, uh, teaching business, teaching how to follow your heart, uh, teaching language skills, like all these different things. And I go, wow, I can create, there's no, like a a really simplified way to say is like a coaching, uh, a life coaching business, a life coaching service for veterans. And so uh, because I was coming out from the frame of how do we serve 200,000 new veterans a year, I, I started to unravel uh, some, some concepts that I've been working with. And so that's really our mission is even if you're not going to go on and do plant medicine, this is good for you. And it's the ultimate prep and integration. Uh, There's no, if someone goes to, even if, Forget the psychedelic medicine part. There's, say, a rehab clinic for veterans who are experiencing addiction as a 30-day program, but afterwards, there's nowhere for them to go. Mm. And so our program never ends. There's mm. like a there's a 12 module that should take 12 or 13 weeks for someone to get through. But after that, there's continuing education and community, and it's something that never ends. And so uh, that's another problem that gets solved. It's like, okay, it's scalable and there's no end date because veterans, when they get out of the military, it's like, oh, it's over. And and there's the, the door closes and then they go to another program and the door closes on them again. So this is something that we get to continue to create with them over time. Wow, okay, so... I love it. And a few things I'd like to highlight there. So being off mission, I feel like is something that everybody can relate to veteran or not, especially, Mm -hmm. you know, mission driven mastermind leaders in this uh, community. So yeah, I felt like that was so powerful in your story and everybody can relate to that in, you know, feeling off mission or maybe not sure what the mission is. And like, that's real, you know, that can just get to the core of us. And so without that being solid, um, it can be a dark place to be with, you know, in the, in the times that I've felt that as well. So I felt like that was powerful in your story of how you felt that. And then you navigated that. Yeah, there was a, there was a, 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 a number of years where I was just working. Yeah. So I had left, I had left my company that I'd built up. It was a health and fitness company I'd built up and left in 2018. And it was, I was very driven to grow that. And now a lot of that was from a place of lack, Mm -hmm. like, oh, I don't feel like I'm enough. So I'm going to 
just crush this. And then I got to a place where I go, wow, I am enough. Mm. And then when I, once I was enough, I go, well, this whole company, the whole vision of this company is built off of a, uh, off of not being enough. And so that's why I had to leave. And then I spent five years from 2018 to 2023 mm. working and creating and, and having fun and making good stuff and consulting, uh, others, but it wasn't, I could tell I wasn't on mission mm. even then it was more of, I would say the last two years I was working to make money. I was helping people. I was doing good stuff, but it didn't feel, I didn't feel that passion. I didn't feel that drive. And, uh, I, but I, I'd been there before I knew that something was coming. I could feel this energy that wanted to present itself, but I had no idea what it was. And I spent a good year, um, you know, and living with my fiance, she, we, we got together all, it'll be four years in May mm. and she's never been with an entrepreneur before. And mm. she's watching me l like barely be able to pay the bills and barely, and like just doing enough consulting to make it and mm. uh, cash flow just being even or even negative uh for a year and i'm going yeah there's something coming and she's going what are you talking about yeah uh maybe you should get a job yeah. i was like i've been an entrepreneur for 16 years i i'm not hireable she goes yeah. what do you mean you're not hireable i'm like i literally like even if i just got a few clients here and there i would make way more money yeah than i would be able to like no no one's gonna hire me for that's going to pay me one hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollars a year. I don't yeah. have any, I don't have any skills. Like I, I can run a company. I can't like, <laughs> we're going to just stick me in at, as a copywriter or stick me in as this or that. Yeah. Like I can do those things, but no one's going to pay me what I need to get paid in order to do that. And it's better for me to sit in the, uh, sit in this space of nothing and mm -hmm. wait and just be paying attention to what's going on uh, than scrambling around trying to find something to do. So that, that that was actually a big challenge I had like basically a year ago at this time. There was like, mm -hmm. what are you what are you doing? And I go, I don't know. And that was that was not good for her. Mm. Wow. Yeah, so much there. And again, I feel like everybody can relate there because very few people, you know, come out of the box with their business, their calling, their passion all lined up, you know, right. <laughs> you know, maybe the, maybe some, maybe not, but for the rest of us, it's a process of growth and rebirth, you know, identity transformation, build up a mountaintop. And then like you shared, you realize, okay, I was pushed, you know, by not having enough. And that's great to a point, but what's going to be the next you know, pull, what's pulling me and mm -hmm. rather than pushing me. And I've felt that my own way as well. And I think it's so powerful to that you're speaking to this because it's the thing that maybe goes unsaid so much is that there's identity changes that happen and it can be humbling. You know, I know when I've felt that at my different points, it's like, oh, <laughs> I'm used to, you know, having a certain thing, making a certain thing, then all of a sudden going in this like rebirth transformation phase. Um, for me, it's, you know, it's definitely been humbling at different times. So I just love that you share that because it's just real part of the process. And, you know, on this journey of self-actualization, like making sure the, the calling matches with the business and the people we're here to serve, like it, it takes some, some refinement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, a lot of trial and error, you know, I, one thing that I, that I, that I did in the five years is I did stay busy. And I did, I did put feelers out. I was like, Ooh, I'll try this out and I'll start posting about this on social media and see people, how people respond. I'll, I'll do some real estate investing. Maybe I'll like that, you know, like, you know, that's, it can't be bad to learn real estate. Like all, every wealthy person has some real estate invest, investing holdings. And I got into these things and like, you know, a month or two into digging in and uh, real estate, as an example, started digging into that. And I realized how much administrative work was involved. And I go, 
oh, I am not meant to be <laughs> doing this. Like, maybe I, you know, when I, when I, when my cash flow is higher, I would rather be a lender. Like I, I would love to participate. I like to participate in, in real estate investing, but not in the type of real estate investing I was doing. And uh, there's something about doing stuff that you don't just trying anything out. Yeah. See if it's there. Like you really get clear on what it is you don't want to be doing. And I think that that's required to find out what it is that you want to be doing. Like I needed to suffer a bit so I could like fine tune my, my listening to what it is that, that I am passionate about. Absolutely. And for the human design lovers out there, us three fives or one threes or three sixes, like trial and error, you know, put learning through experience. Um, I'm a three five. So that's the way uh, we roll. So yeah. And I, I love that you just shared that as well. Cause you know, maybe everything lines up right away, but maybe not. That's okay. It's still worth it to, you know, follow the path. And so another thing I'd love to highlight from your share as well is the money conversation, the charging conversation, which comes mm -hmm. up all the time when it's a mission driven business, you know, the people that I attract, people I work with. And when we have like, say a regular business, it's very clear, you know, you're providing service and you get money in exchange and it can be good. It can help people. I always share the experience that I had with like my local SEO company. You know, it's very clean and clear. We have prices, we pay them, we do the work, we have testimonials. It was great. I was not hopping on Zoom calls or phone calls just to, you know, make friends or chat about the weather. You know, <laughs> like it was like, right. we're here for business. We're here to, you know, make money together. And that's why we're here. So let's do it or not do it. And so for me personally, when I went into say the mission space, the passion space, it was, you know, giving the service that I felt like every soul of my body was meant to do. It was the people that I loved uh, working with, working with friends, working with family, like all these different hats that we'd wear. And finding that line of charging was, was difficult. And I know a lot of people have that as well, or feel guilty about it. And, and just to paint the contrast too, when I was in my SEO business I was like, all right, great, this is good. But I didn't feel like I was born to be doing local SEO. Like that wasn't my mm -hmm. call. You know, but helping people share their gift with their mastermind, their community, absolutely. So a reframe that it took me way longer than I wish it would have taken me was to see money as sustainability. Sustainability, because it's like, okay, in order to have an, a vehicle, an operation, the cash has to come from somewhere. And so it's either coming from the same ecosystem or it's from this other, you know, business, job, whatever, and then, or, uh, or, uh, donations put in here. And that's another thing people tend to think, oh, I'll do a nonprofit. Well, the reality is, yes, those can be great, but man, how much time, energy, and money is spent on raising money? <laughs> you know, like you're, you're gonna, you're selling somebody. Right. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I'd love to just double click on that and spend a little time because it's such a deep topic. And what I've really come to truly believe in, in voice is like, how can we give from an overflowing cup instead of mm -hmm. from a empty cup, you know, where we're scratching the barrel, we're just giving out a little drop. The clients don't get the love that we want them to have. Maybe there's some resentment or guilt or, you know, sharpness that comes there instead of being like, okay, how can this be sustainable? Fill up. And then since we're mission driven, generosity focused, what happens? We get the cup filled up and we just overflow, you know, over into giving anyways. So yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts and you know what resonates with yeah, yeah. sustainability. Yeah, I, I consulted health and fitness coaches for a while. And uh that was a common thing. I, I find that any you're right. There's anytime someone has something they're really passionate about, for some reason, what the money conversation becomes a bigger challenge. Hmm. Uh it it's so funny, like um people will people will judge a coach for charging high prices, but don't think about a medical doctor that's making, you know, <laughs> two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars a year. Providing, providing this, when a client, when a patient goes to see a doctor or a health and fitness professional, they're looking for the same result, right? They want to improve their health. 
usually if you're at a medical doctor, your health is already taken a shit. And, but if you're seeing a coach, you're getting ahead of it. And in fact, the a health coaching is a way more valuable is way more valuable to the individual because you're going to help them avoid ever being sick in the first place. Hmm. And so I just remember, you know, it occurred to me one day, I go, this is really interesting how people judge the coach, the health and fitness coach, but don't judge the doctor. And one of the reasons is because in our culture, uh, the, you're not ha- you're not negotiating with the doctor what you're going to pay. There, we have an, a third party pay system with insurance and all these things. Yeah, and so people don't feel like they're paying. They're they're, they're basically strong armed into paying insurance. Yeah, and then they they're not present to how you know what a doctor is getting paid out of their own pocket over time. Mm. And so there's a little bit of that going on. Uh, so uh, I think a lot of times when someone goes, okay, well, what's, what's this person's other option? Uh, I also, uh, my, my fiance, she runs, uh, an organization called the psychedelic guide network. And so she's gathered like PhD, PhD clinical psychologist Mm -hmm. with, uh, with traditionally trained practitioners from South America and puts them in the same room talking together, Amazing, which which is exactly what we need. Yeah. And Um, so every, every other week I do a 90 minute business consult with these guides and they're, they're, you know, they're also afraid to charge money because like, they're like healing should be free. Like everyone should have access, accessibility. And, and I agree, uh, to, uh, to that, but whose responsible it is, is it to be, to make it accessible. And so it's really interesting. Same thing there. It's like, uh, on one side of the, spe- uh, everyone's selling pain and suffering, right? Like, uh, s- middle-aged man that makes a lot of money, whose marriage is falling apart, going through his midlife crisis. He's experiencing suffering. What does he buy? He goes and gets that Porsche, right? Like <laughs> that red one. <laughs> yeah. He gets that. He goes and gets that fast car and they're marketing to his pain, right? We mm-hmm. know in marketing, you have to identify what, what is it they aspire to? What's in the way? Yeah. What's the pain that they, it's, and it's not the real pain, it's perceived pain. Mm-hmm. What's the pain they perceive and what do they think the solution is? And so someone might go spend $100,000 on a car, but someone is afraid to charge, say, let's just say $10,000 for uh, a few months of healing work that might have that person realize they don't need that car anymore. Mm -hmm. It's way cheaper and it actually solves the problem. Mm -hmm. And so it's getting present to that as well as like, what are people buying instead of my service Mm -hmm. that is really just a Mm band-aid? So if you're in the mission space, you're probably providing a service that that goes beyond uh, momentary relief in some way. And so these are just, these are ways I think about it that create perspective and, uh, you know, or, or, uh, you know, the, the, you know, I can spend a lot of money right now or, you know, buy once cry once, right. I can spend a lot of money right now on something that's going to help me, or I'm going to be paying like crazy medical bills until the day I die and live a lower, uh, uh, my, my lifestyle be impacted. Hmm. And so, uh, those are those are some of the ways I look at pricing. And when I look at the veterans, it, you know, it was it was really hard because I had a history of being charitable with mm-hmm. it. And I go, you know what? I know that people actually need to pay some money to have skin in the game in order, you know, they pay attention to what they pay for. And and um, yeah, I just I was like, all right, I'm going to charge money. And it was really it was funny because I've been coaching people on how to charge and get past these things themselves. It's so easy, especially if I'm selling something like how to make more money. Mm-hmm. And then when I got to selling the veterans, mm-hmm. all these blocks came up and I'm, I'm hearing myself talk to my coach mm-hmm. and the same words that are coming out of my mouth are the same words that come out of clients mouths to me. I'm like, and I'm 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 stopping myself, and he's like, "No, keep talking." I go, I I am watching myself make the same excuses, and I know exactly 
what I would say in this situation. And it, pretty sure, sure enough, my coach was saying similar things back to me uh, yeah. to, to help shift the perspective. Um, but I think what, the, the major thing that helps is getting people, once you start serving people and you start seeing the results, you really just got to keep going back to the results you get people. And um, I, yeah, I, I, I'm in a place right now where I charge veterans to do this work and they're happy to pay and they're, uh, they're doing well. The other, uh, right now I'm charging $200 a month to be in the program and it's a scalable model. So it's not, it's not like I'm doing a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And so uh, because it's such a strong mission driven thing, I also have people on my leadership team who aren't getting paid right now, who will get paid. Uh, and I'm looking at it and going, okay, you know, at 200 uh, bucks a month, you know, we, we really do need 500 people in this. And I price it at a place where I go, look, 200 bucks a month will get somebody's attention. The mm -hmm. average person, you, they pay 200 bucks, but them being able to pay that is really just a shifting of priorities, you mm -hmm. know, two less bar tabs uh, is 200 bucks a month. And, yeah. you Especially know, with inflation these days, that's <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. I, I don't know. I haven't had a, I haven't had a bar tab in so long. I don't even know what, they, what happens with them, but uh, you know, it's a reorganization of priorities. And if they still can't pay that, then they probably need a higher level of service that we're not prepared to give them, like mm -hmm. expecting them to log into a zoom call once a week and participate in the online community if you're having trouble paying 200 bucks a month, you probably, you, there's something else going on where yeah. we're probably out of reach for you anyway. And so, um, so I, so that, that really, the, and in the beginning, the first, the first like dozen people I sold into, I sold it at, at $1,200 one time payment. Like you, you get it forever. Mm -hmm. So you pay, you pay once and you get it forever. And that actually front loaded a little bit of cash and seeing people, you know, send over $1,200. I go, every time someone pays money, that's, that's momentum. And I go, yeah. okay, they believe in this. They believe that, you know, they want the help. Uh, and my messaging isn't even fine tuned yet. And, mm -hmm. and they want in. So that's, uh, that gives me a lot of, um, gives me a lot of like confidence in mm -hmm. what we're doing. Oh, awesome. So a few things that come to mind here is first off. So if you're listening to this and you're like, this sounds amazing. Um, there's going to be a link below to Michael Bledsoe's Instagram. You can reach out to him um, with details and we'll go more into, you know, what's in the mastermind as well, but just for the, you know, mm -hmm. people who are like, I heard it. I know it's right. Let's go. Um, so that links there. And then, yeah, the sustainability piece and the pricing. So simply put, without the money flowing in a sustainable way, masterminds go away. Right. Good dreams, good momentum, even get people on board. But if there's no fuel in the ship, ship goes down. And right. even if there's money coming from a different source from the mastermind leader, well, what happens? They, go, they get burnt out mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and then boom. So if we want a good cause, a good mastermind continue, the fuel needs to be there. And like I shared too at the bar tab, it's interesting. It's like people will see that for coaching of like, oh, why would they have to pay? But it's like, well, people pay for groceries, house, <laughs> you know, the electric bill doesn't stop <laughs> as far as I'm aware, you know, all these things. So it's like when it comes to um, a service, you know, like coaching a community, why, why would that be any different? Of course. Yeah. And you, I, I imagine that the people listening want to be the best version of themselves for what they're doing as possible which yeah. means it needs to be your full-time job right and yeah. if it's going to be your full-time job then you, you have to have a sustainable cash flow to make that work right if you're someone who's working another job to pay for this because you're passionate about it and it's not cash flowing you're not going to be the best version of that that for your your people as possible so it's really your duty to charge so that you can stay on top of your game and create a really solid product. Mm. 
Amen. It's your duty to charge so you can go full time and build an amazing product. Okay, fantastic. So yeah, I'd love to go into some of the specifics of the model, the mastermind model that you're using. You mentioned that the journey, the mission never ends. Love that mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's, there's so many different layers of going on a mission together. And there's so many different seasons of life, um, internally, externally, friends, family, career, economy, like all these things. So I love that it's not a 90 day program. It's not, you know, six weeks, even though there's the modules in there, it's a, right. It's a mastermind, it's a community, it's a membership, it's an ongoing uh, journey. So yeah, just lo love to hear uh, any specifics that come up of how you, you serve these, these veterans. Yeah, I'll, what I'll do is I'll tell you what it is now and then I'll tell you the one year vision. And okay. so um, what it is right now is they, they get a Zoom call a week. There's a group chat thread that we're keeping up with there's uh there's weekly video modules and there's daily practices hmm. that will last more than 90 days and so that's the foundational program once they finish that foundational program now we're speaking the same language hmm. now they can actually now they can really do something and so uh it's kind of like the prerequisite to doing all the other cool stuff Mm -hmm. And so that's where we're at right now. We have a group going through that first like 12, 13 weeks of curriculum, which gives us material to talk about on the Zoom calls and to help them through whatever they're working on. And we're, um, I also have uh, uh, assistant mentors that are in the, the group that we're all contributing our content. And so I'm actually, we're, we're basically a week and a half in and we have resources on how to manage your mind, resources on how to get access to um, this device you can get from the VA that uh, helps with um, brainwave patterns. You just clip nice. these things on your ears. Uh, really? So like we're really finding, uh, we're, we're like using every single resource we can get our hands on to help mm -hmm. them. And, and we're cool. concentrating that in. And so that's what it looks like right now. In a year, there's going to be multiple calls per day. Mm. So there's going to be multiple opportunities for someone to hop on and receive mentorship uh, every day. Uh, there will be uh, a couple hundred people that have been through the, in, uh, the introductory uh, program and will be back and we're teaming up them as mentors so that each person mm -hmm. gets a buddy right they have a buddy that nice. they're teamed up with someone who's who has been through the program and is matched up with somebody new and that helps create uh, a peer network and camaraderie and, and keeps people engaged uh there's also a leadership program for those people who are mentoring so they're they're basically being taught how to mentor and lead others nice. and so that'll be another 12 week program. So it's like, okay, finish your 12 weeks. Do you want to go and mentor other people? Okay. Well now we're going to teach you how to mentor. Right. And, and then we have uh, side missions. So nice. you, um, you, during the first 12 week modules and you're working with things are going to come up in your life. So last call I had with the crew, you know, a couple guys are working on career stuff. And then one guy is dealing with a potential divorce on his hands. Mm -hmm. And so we're dealing with things as they come up. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they get out of those 12 weeks, they can go into a side mission, which is another circle that's led by a leader mm -hmm. on, there might be something on family. There's a side mission of family. There's a side mission of entrepreneurship. There's a side mission of, uh, Oh, it's uh, so fun. I love leadership it. Leadership in your work environment, how to develop yourself yeah. as a leader in whatever work environment you're in. There's a side mission of, of fitness. There's a side mission of you're dealing with some type of chronic disease. So we have all these other side missions that they can not only get help inside of, but also become contributors in. And so uh, this is how it becomes, this is how it is scalable, is that the more people that come through, the more leadership there is 
And there is, you know, the leader, the core leadership team are paid positions, but to be a part of the program, uh, to be participating as a leader in the program is not necessarily paid. It's because it's a purpose driven thing. It's not their full time job. Their job is to show up for, you know, an hour long or 90 minute call once a week and answer some questions. But by participating, they're developing themselves as a leader as well. And uh, so that's that's where it is in a year. Um, an interesting thing that's occurred. So when I look at that and I look at just the can I can I get a thousand veterans paying 200 bucks a month? Yes or no? Yes, I can definitely do that. If I got any paying here in the beginning, that means that, and with the small amount of people that I was, I, I talked to 16 veterans and I signed up six, right? In the very beginning. I'm like, okay, I signed up six and there was no landing page. There was no real marketing. I just made some posts and I got it moving and I threw, you know, there's a Zoom link. We're using Signal for the messaging app. It is low tech, mm -hmm. right? But also when the word started getting out, some something really interesting happened. I got teamed up with a woman who runs a uh, marketing automation for a nutrition coaches company who happens to be a Navy veteran who basically is contributing all of her skills. So within a few weeks of me committing to doing this, we were able to launch with some back the back end systems are being built and now i'm not that type of a person i'm not like mr tech or anything like that i know how it works but i don't want to be working in that i just hand her stuff and she builds out all the marketing stuff hmm. so and that's what's happening right now so when you're on when you're on mission then and the right people will be attracted um another thing that i've become very present to is uh taking linear um taking linear steps forward will result in nonlinear results. Mm. And so I go, okay, I know how to launch a mastermind, right? I know how to launch a coaching program, a mastermind, whatever you want to call it. I've done it several times. You know, the, the steps are get to know your market, your niche, uh, start making posts, get people into a program, build out a lead magnet and email sequence uh, start marketing and get your, get your voice out there. And especially for my personality, I'm, I'm pretty good on podcasts, social media, things like that. So I can, I can, I can get a pretty good amount of organic reach, but it's, a funny thing happened is, uh, this is before I even really started posting a lot. You know, I, you, you, you saw me posting, but mm -hmm. basically I've had, um, I'll, I'll just, this, I've had two people reach out to me. One works directly for the VA. Someone else is running a company that contracts with the VA and they go, Oh, you're exactly who we need. Mm. So now there's a door open to them giving us, let's just say as an example, this is, this is what's possible that, that my eyes were opened up to, because I never worked, you know, I always created my own leads and charged money. I didn't know. Yeah. I'm not familiar with working with like a government contract or anything like that. Mm. But now there's the possibility of them sending us a hundred plus people a month wow. and paying for their spot. Wow. And so this, this linear growth thing, like I, I have my plan. I know how to like get, you know, six clients today and 12 clients the next month. And and maybe 20 clients the next month. And it's going to be through, you know, creating marketing, social media stuff. And then we'll get to a point where we can run some ads and so on and so forth. And then all of a sudden, Hey, by the way, uh, you may not have to market. You may not have to, you know, sell, uh, you, you may just, the problem may be, how do we handle that many people that soon? And so I, I think that's, and the reason those doors open is because when people started hearing about the mission of helping these veterans, like it, this is, this is the basic training of getting out. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. When people go, Holy shit, there's nothing like that out there. I got it. I've got people to send you. I, I, I've got, um, I had a psychotherapist reach out to me that assesses 10 to 20 veterans a week. 
and mm. has nowhere to send them. She just does the assessment and then some psychiatrist at the VA is going to prescribe them drugs, but she yeah. wants to send them somewhere else where they're going to get uh, better support. Mm. And so I've got that coming in. So the, when you're, when you're on mission, mm. these other channels will open up with, mm. but you, you can't count on that. Right. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not banking on magic. Um, yeah. I'm going to, I'm doing my best to, to do it the way I know it should be done. And I take action every day. And when an op I'm open to other opportunities, when they come up, I explore them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So, so much good stuff there. And the specifics I feel like are so helpful for people to hear because this is, yeah, this new scalable model is innovative and there's not really a blueprint um, there. So a few things I'd like to highlight is you started off low tech conversations to launch. I mean, you're speaking my language, you know, coming from, I don't know how many years it's been 13 years in like the marketing agency space for me, you know, my first instinct was always to build a website. You know, that's what I'd done so many times. Mm -hmm. Even when I know it wasn't the right thing, it's like my hands were like, must tweak the website. And I'm like, no, it's not needed, but I still had to reverse that. So you you had conversations to launch. So powerful. Truly believe that. And you did a founder deal. So 1200 for people who to say yes, because there was no, the messaging wasn't super clear. There wasn't a website. There wasn't all these things. It was like, Hey, if you got a good gut feeling on this, you know, and you believe in me, like, let's do this. Mm -hmm. And that's what tech startups, Silicon Valley startups, you know, they do that with, uh, I don't know, it's called maybe like the series A or whichever, or no seed, seed routing. They're just like the VC has a quick conversation, has a gut feeling, and then a 50 K check. And they know they might not see that back, or it might be the big, you know, winner, but they go on that gut feeling. So I feel like that's so powerful to not lose sight of for everybody, especially in the chat GPT era and the design a website era, like all these things that just, um, are taken away from that conversation and you got six six like core founders in that yes charter members right mm -hmm. yep. awesome and then you did the weekly calls which you're doing right now while also knowing hey this is what the next step looks like with your year vision so powerful there as well so that you know you're not skipping steps you're like okay this is where we're at and then once we're there we'll go to the uh the more involved model and very interesting with the side missions. I love it. I love it. And, you know, relationship, family, or fitness, I feel like that's such a great example. And I, I visualize, visualize it as a bubble. You know, here's the mastermind community. And, you know, maybe it starts here and then it grows. And it sounds like you have these different pods or squads, you know, happening still in the bubble. And I feel like that's so cool that you have the mentor leadership because I believe that it's better for the members to have, you know, people within the mastermind community leading it, number one. And then number two, it's leadership capabilities and development, of course, for people who want it, huge value there. And then also, I believe it keeps that price point at that price point, because if it would, otherwise it would have to be a whole staff and salary and benefits and team outings and like, whoa, like, <laughs> you know, just to sprinkle some inflation on there as well. And like all of a sudden it's just a balloon price that I believe is less quality than the member driven fostering um, approach. So like there's, that was very, very, very powerful as well. Um, anything you'd like to share that came up from that? Mm. Yeah. The, <clears throat> the, the selling people before they had seen really knew what was going on is mm or something that um, if, you, if you're solving a real problem for people mm. and you can describe the problem better than they can and they're experiencing it, they'll trust that you understand how to solve it. Yeah. Um, I've also built up a lot of social equity over the years. And there's, because I've consistently been out on social media and podcasting and consistently, I, I've, I've, 
you know, there's been periods of time where I've taken some breaks from a platform or something like that. But generally, I have been, even when I have nothing to sell, mm. I know that in the future I will. And so it's up to me to put up content once a week, at least to mm. help people think about things differently. Or I see something where I can be helpful, just putting something out, even if it's not related. I don't know how many emails I've sent out that had no links in them. It was mm. just giving good advice. There's no calls to action. Cause I actually had nothing to sell. I've gone and spoken on stage at, at places where, where I didn't, I said yes to speaking on stage at an event that didn't have an audience that I had anything to sell them, but I did it anyway, just because I want to keep that part sharp of, and so it turns it, that turns into a, a network that trusts me because they keep on seeing like, Oh, there's blood. So there's blood. So he's all over the place. And every time he, he talks, I learn something new. And I think there's a lot of value in that. And that um, the people who signed up, they weren't complete strangers. They had, they had some type of preconceived notion of me. I never met him in person, but they had seen something from me. Maybe they were on my newsletter. Maybe they were following me on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, but they knew of me in some way. And, and that makes a huge difference. And I think that's something I like to encourage people to do is, you know, even if you don't have anything to sell, be out there, like be out in the town. I, I think about social media as the town square. It's just be on the town square, be helpful, be, be friendly. It'll pay off. Oh, I can't hear you. Whoops, my bad. So uh, absolutely. And a question for these wonderful potential opportunities where, you know, they're, it's like uh, aligned partnerships, you know, where the, the veterans can be served. Um, do you, yeah, yeah. I'm just curious, like referrals type deals, do you plan on doing anything with that? Or is it something that it's just such a aligned, natural, you know, solve in the market that's not necessary? Because that's something I've noticed too, is can be tough for people is again, finding like the right balance of what to do or not to do, you know, to have the flow of, of new members coming in. Yeah, it's interesting because it's sometimes doing like an affiliate program can almost be off-putting to the person who wants to refer in. Absolutely. Like I, I've, I've talked to some people. I'm like, oh, I've got, I can set you up as an affiliate. And they're like, no, 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 I don't want, I'm like, okay. Like if they don't want it, I, I immediately back off. Yeah. Uh, they heard me say the words if they want it later, they can talk to me about it. But yeah. um, one of the things that um, I have not implemented yet, that's on the list of things to do is, <clears throat> And, and I, it's going to require that the people who are participating in the program right now get far enough into the program. They really feel the value of it. Mm -hmm. And we've had two calls, so they're feeling the value of it already. Like yeah. I, one of, one of the members posted on, on Instagram yesterday, it's like, it's only been one week, but it's already changing my life. And so it's, uh, so it may not take that long, but the idea is, create an affiliate program for every single person that's in, uh, you know, a referral. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can, with, I'm um, using go high level, I can basically make them all an affiliate and give them a hundred percent of the first per the first month of whoever comes in. Mm. So it's a three month commitment to come in. So I basically be paying them 30%. And if they, mm. if they, I'm allowing people to pay in full for the year. So, it's 197 for a month, 197 a month, or 1997 for the year to be a part of the group. And I'll pay them 30% if someone pays in full. So the idea is, is like, it's like, yeah, you're paying 200 bucks a month. If you want a free month, just refer somebody. And mm -hmm. you're going to be, a lot of these guys are going to be referring their buddies anyway. Yeah. But some of these people are going to be super influencers. Like we have, we have veterans that are in the group who have 20,000 plus followers on Instagram 
Like one guy jumps out of planes as a hobby and nice. has a lot of veterans. And these guys are all, you know, if he says, Hey, join this program, you know, a bunch of people come over. It then becomes, he's an influencer. He's pr maybe selling some other things and making a little bit of money here and there. But if I pay him, he gets 20 people in, I pay him 200 bucks per person that comes in. Mm -hmm. You know, he just made 4,000 bucks that, that doubled his disability check he gets every month. Right. And so, uh, for me, one of the questions I was asking myself is like, how do I, how do I help these guys make money? Hmm. And so some of them could make money just by recruiting people in. And hmm. it's, it's, it, it, it's a delicate thing because, hmm. um, are you, you're from, have you done a landmark education at all? Landmark forum? I haven't, but I know a lot of people have. Yeah. And you so like, it. yeah, it's, uh, the, the thing that landmark gets the most shit for is their sales process. And the reason is, is they do basically zero marketing and they reflect, they, they rely a hundred percent on referrals mm -hmm. and it's high pressure referrals. Mm. Uh, it's part of the program. It's, it's, they're teaching you to be a leader. And part of being, becoming a leader is basically leading your friends <laughs> and family <laughs> to landmark. And it comes off um, uh, inauthentic. And one of the things that I identified is like when I, when I did landmark, I had like, I brought like 12 people with me mm. because I understood what was going on. I go, Oh, this is a test. This is like, uh, yes, this is good. There's mm. like anyone who goes to this program, their life is going to improve for having done this program. You know, it's a personal development program for anyone who doesn't know. And one weekend, you'll get benefits. I don't care how much personal development you've done somewhere else. You're going to learn something that makes your life better. And mm -hmm. a single weekend at a really good price. I think it's like priced at like around six, seven hundred dollars for the weekend. And uh, and I got like twelve people in there, and every almost everybody was really grateful for me bringing them there. Mm -hmm. And then there were other people who got maybe one or two of their friends there and their friends were like sitting there with their arms crossed and were kind of like, what the, what the hell am I doing here? This is stupid. This feels like a cult mm -hmm. and this and that. And it hit me that they were recruiting really poor salespeople to mm -hmm. sell for them. I just happen to be a good salesman. Mm -hmm. So if you're a good salesperson, it doesn't feel like you're being sold. Mm -hmm. It feels like you're being invited. But mm -hmm. somebody who doesn't have experience as a salesperson it starts feeling kind of sleazy because mm -hmm. they don't have the experience. And so asking, asking for heavy referrals or doing an affiliate with all your members, that's something you got to watch out for is like, mm -hmm. I gotta, I gotta really be careful about how we're going to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I feel like it's a, the next level of the pricing conversation. So the pricing on the front end, um, is a piece. And then it's like, okay, the, yeah, the referral, invite a friend, um, how to have that in balance. Amazing. So yeah. And I feel like the spirit of this is so powerful with masterminds and communities. It's like, you know, so that a person doesn't have to walk alone. So if we finally find just like the veterans, they find, whoa, this team that they have now that gives them that the team they didn't have. Right. And so mm -hmm. if there's people they can say, Hey, join aboard the team. And, um, so powerful to do that. So yeah, as we start rounding the corner here, um, I'd like to do a summary here of the things that we've covered, which we covered a lot of ground. And then I'd love to hear a you know, final message from you that you'd like to share, whatever comes up. And again, for, you know, veterans looking to learn more, there's the Instagram link here to have a conversation with, with Michael and get the info. And so what we've done today is cover a lot of ground is really hearing first off your story. So Michael's story of his first day out, you know, of quote unquote, being free as you, as you shared the first couple of weeks and what that process was like of being so connected to a, a mission, a group structure, and then being out. And for all of us entrepreneurs and mastermind leaders, creating our own structure, especially being innovators, you know, we know what that's like 
venturing off into the unknown. And so how there was the ups and downs of that and, you know, blending the personal and professional success that you had in business. And then that journey of, okay, how can my business match my calling? How can that mission be lined up? And going through the things that everybody on this path, we all find, which is all of a sudden the money, you know, can be a different thing. You know, the sustainability, the charging, the pricing, and um, how that can be a process that can block us, but then unlock us when, you know, it clicks in and just really what you're doing with over two, 200 to 250,000 new veterans every year are going through their own version of what you shared, which is just nuts to me, 250,000. So yeah, how you put together this mastermind group, um, put it together in such a way so that you could go full-time because as you shared your, it's your duty. It's our duty to be able to go full-time and build an amazing product and how you started not with a complicated, fancy funnel of doom, but instead with conversations with people that had a, a connection with you already in some way. Um, but I also love too, some of them you didn't even meet in person. So mm -hmm. anybody feeling like, oh, well, it's gotta be who I met. You can check that off. And you started with the weekly calls while also mapping out the scalable vision as more and more members come and how you blended the weekly calls with the foundational 12 week program, the daily practice and the must mastermind buddy system. That's, that's me uh, with my notes and the mentorship leadership track for people and yeah, the vision of how it'll grow to multi calls throughout the days, you know, and like, man, what a support network for people to plug in. And as I know, you know, it's like not necessary for people to be there on every call, of course, to be successful. However, it's there because schedules change, especially families and such. So having the extra support there is just amazing. And how you being on mission and really solving a key problem and working on your communication um, has opened up incredible doors, which I'm excited to hear tabs on um, the big, big organizations that um, could be sending people your way and bringing it all home with um, referrals and just really the spirit of we're in the community business. So if a friend of a friend can invite people and there's that like golden thread throughout everybody of a connection point, I believe that such a smoother growth path than say all the different traditional means because we're in the people business and the connection business. So all of that to say, this has been the, the interview case study. Um, is there, you know, a final message or insight you'd like to share? Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the idea that we have professional full-time soldiers that spend years without reintegrating into society is fairly new. Mm -hmm. um, that was that was pretty rare until about 100 years ago. Most soldiers would go and fight in, in a campaign and then they would come home and go back to their regular job. And there was, a, there was integration that was happening mm -hmm. in between campaigns or whatever. For the, we have people that serve for four to 20 years now. And there, it's a new, there's a new psychological dimension that we're dealing with. Uh, there are problems that are, that are new because of how the military is run. And so um, we live in the United States, we live in a, in a culture, uh, we live in a war culture, but not a warrior culture. We're very <laughs> good at, at extending ourselves and creating war in other places but we as like men especially when we're growing up we're not really trained to be warriors there's like you turn 18 and then you join the military and then boom you know it's it's this thing and so we and then society as a whole doesn't know how to receive the soldiers sailors airmen back mm. there's this expectation that like you should just know exactly, you know, how to like get a job and get back to work and all that. So there is, there's a big opportunity for the culture at large to do a better job of raising our children mm. to, um, 
to be able to withstand some of these really arduous things like war. Um, not that that should be our goal is to be ready for war, but you should, um, there, there's something happening in how people are being raised that I've noticed. And then also, uh, practicing a, a great deal of compassion for when people come back, it, it is, it is incredibly difficult as a veteran to come back and to go from that environment. It's a lifestyle to having it completely stripped away. Mm. And it's not an easy process. And I think one of the issues is that our society is not built to receive our veterans. And so um, I just ask every person on this call that's not a veteran to uh, to recognize that. And when you see a veteran, don't just say, uh, thank you for your service. You know, really ask questions and get to know them and you know, a lot of times these guys go to jobs and they're experiencing some PTSD symptoms and they get let go because, you know, they're under some high stress um, thing at work and that's triggering something. And and it's, you know, it's not necessarily the responsibility of any individual, but it's the, it's, it's all of our responsibility. Like we're, we're the ones voting for these politicians who are so quick to send people to war and it really is it's all of our responsibility and who's in leadership and it's all of our responsibility to take care of the veterans when they're coming home like the well-being of every person in this country is everybody's responsibility um and it's an individual choice to take on that responsibility so um i i just invite people to sit with that and to uh and to be curious about what's going on for the veterans and uh, show some compassion. Um, and that compassion comes from just being curious about what, what our experience has been. Mm, powerful. And so, yeah, if anybody knows a veteran in their life around them, please send them this video. And so that they can get connected with um, Bledsoe and, yeah, thank you for sharing and being here today. This has been the Mastermind Group for American Veterans, which is the mission after. And thanks so much for being here and doing the work that you're doing. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it.